Okay, before we get started, let's just have a, have a look at the sidekick. This is the flower we're going to tie today. Just give it a quick spin. And the obvious things you'll, you'll notice with the sidekick is one side's trimmed completely to the hook shank, which is obviously going to create lots more drag on one side than the other. And this is, this is if you like, the motor of the fly. That reaction between water pressure and drag. So to control that reaction, you see we've, we've tied a 532 brass bead on the bottom. So what that does stops, or it helps stop, the fly from getting pushed in this position. So obviously the fly is going to flip um, to the point of least resistance, which is face down and on the surface. So it'll just roll. Every time you strip, this fly will just roll like this. So to control that, we've put a brass bead. On my original, I used UV cement, but I, I like the brass bead a lot better. It's, it's easier to um, duplicate from one fly to the next, as far as uh, position and weight. And it also allows the fish to compress that back up into the body without uh, interfering with the hook, hook gap, which is, um, nice too. The closer that bead is to the hook shank, the, the least effective it's going to be. So it's just a compromise between getting in the road of the hook point and not working as, as, as well. So you could push it into the body, but I, f I find it just works out a little bit better if it's a little bit further away from the hook shank. So that's the sidekick. So let's just get started. Okay, so we've got our Partridge Universal Predator in the, in, the, in the vise. So let's just take our thread. Okay, so we'll go and start our thread just above the hook point. And wind back to the barb. Just gonna put a little bit of a, a layer of thread down and wind back to the point. Grab some white bucktail. I'm gonna say about a third of a pencil. You usually start off with a little bit more than you need and then we just just pinch the the end tips and just remove all the short fibers I like to give the hair a little bit of a turn and then just do it again get rid of a couple more if there's any any rogue fibers there that are sticking out, we'll just get rid of those too. And our wing is going to be about twice the hook shank, which is about there. So just offer it up onto your hook and just trim the butt ends to suit. Just tie in the butt ends about level with the hook point. And work our way back. Nice tight turns. When we get just before the barb, let's just throw a couple of lighter turns just to control that bucktail, stop it from flaring out, and then work our way back. Just want a little bit of a taper there. Don't venture um, don't venture too past the point hook point at this stage. We'll tie in some flash. I'm using this ripple flash. Let's just put that under the thread. Sit it on top of the shank. Lock it in with a couple of turns and then fold it the tag ends over to lock it in then come back to your point we can trim this flash just a little bit longer than the tips grab your overwing we're going to use some chartreuse grab another clump about the same thickness again we're just going to go through the same motions there just removing all the short fibers Make 
you can see that's a nice nice clump so we want this just a little bit longer and um, just cut the butt ends off okay so let's just offer it up to the shank get it nice and tight and as we work back towards the hook bend let's pull the bucktail up to stop it from going and wrapping around to the underwing then just return our thread back so let's make a, a nice slight taper there so we've got a little bit of a ramp going to take our thread about so it's level with the hook point. This stage let's put some head cement on. Let it soak right into the bucktail. Okay. So let's take some deer hair for the collar. I'm just using the body, this is a primo strip body hair. Just use this for the collar. You can use um, belly hair if you want. Now we need a nice good clump. Just grab it by the tips. Let's just go ahead and comb all the, the under fur out of that. And just the loose fibers. Let's throw it in our stacker. Give it a good bash. So grab it out of his stacker. Let's offer it up to the hook shank. What we want, the length, we're going to have a fairly nice long collar about from the hook eye to the hook point. That's going to be our collar. So let's just transfer that over to our other hand and snip the butt ends off. So this is offered on top. So the butt ends are around the hook point. Let's go ahead and catch the end of those butt ends. A couple of turns. At this point now we want to push it down and work it, work it so it's going to go like a 180 fan around the hook shank. We don't want it to go underneath the hook but we want a nice even fan around. And then just work our thread through those butt ends, stopping right in front. And let's have a look at that. So that's pretty much what you want there. Just a 180 fan. Let's Grab our blade there and just trim the butt ends there so it doesn't get in out in the road of our body, just like so. And let's go ahead and soak that with some head cement. Get a good dollop on the those butt ends. We want it really nice and secure. And soak some in there as well. Okay, so now just invert your hook up. So your hook point up. And we're going to put a, a clump of, um, of bleached deer hair on the bottom. Just offer that on the inside. Get a couple of 
nice tight turns on it. Again, you don't want it to roll all the way around the hooks. We're just tying it on the bottom. We'll just grab it like that. And then we'll grab another clump of chartreuse and put on top. That just gives you a little bit of, um, of a white belly. I mean, that's the real joy of deer hair. You can be really creative in the colors. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. If you need any tips, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of content on, the, on YouTube about um, spinning deer hair and such. I'm not the grand master at spinning by any means. Maybe you'd be better off watching some episodes of Kelly Gallup spinning hair. He's definitely a grand master at that. So I'll just sort of fumble through here and put a clump on top and pull down nice and tight. Another turn on it. Let's just pull that hair back out of the way, working our thread through and then getting a nice couple of tight turns on the shank. Let's go ahead and put some um, head cement on the, on the bare hook just in front of the hair there so it soaks right into where it needs to get. Now I'm just going to do a clump of um, chartreuse again. These are pretty good clumps about, the, about a pencil, about your standard clump. Just going to wrap, make sure we don't get the underneath. So just pu pushing that down. A couple of good turns. Get our thread out of the clump. Push back. halfway point on the shank from hook point to hook eye we want to tie the keel post in. Now the keel post what I like to use is some 60 pound fluorocarbon about three or four inches so with um, one end of our 60 pound fluorocarbon we're going to squash the end about a quarter inch so let's just go ahead and squash the end. And that's just so it sits on the hook shank. Just squash it and then grab your pliers about a quarter inch in and then just kind of make a 90 degree bend on it. So it um, comes off the shank like so. Just offer it up. If you've got too much, just grab some sturdy scissors and cut cut it a bit off the end if you need to. So let's just work our thread stopping about a sixteenth from the eye. Okay so let's turn our fly so it's hook point up. And we're going to tie in the, the 60 pound fluorocarbon, the keel post. Let's just get a couple of wraps on the tip of that mono, making sure that it's coming, that it's going to come off in line with the hook point and just wind that back. Get nice tight turns. stopping at the hair. And just bend that it on itself 
give it a bit of a push down. Okay, it's, let's put some head cement on those threads. Okay, turn our hook back. And grab another clump of deer hair and continue spinning it. wraps and then work that thread, work that hair over the shank as you go through it for a couple of turns and just work your thread out as we have been. Now it's just a matter of um, spinning hair until we hit the hook eye. I think that clump is just about going to do us. Let's pull the hair out of the way. Few turns of thread. And we'll just go ahead and do a whip finish on that. So there, there's all the tying done. You can just soak a little bit of head cement on our head. Get your dollop there, let it soak right in. At this stage, we've just got a big clump of deer hair. It's even all the way around. So our first cut, usually I, I do it on um, my side, but just so you get a better, better look at the, the flat side, I'll do, it, I'll do it on the camera side. So our first cut is gonna be parallel with the hook bend, and it's just gonna cut off the top. And we, we're gonna cut down just short of the hook shank. Just be careful when you get to the, the back of the fly. You don't want to cut into the collar. So that's our first cut. You can see that that's um, pretty close to the hook shank. Our next cut, you can, do, you can either do the bottom or the top. Let's go with the bottom. With the bottom, you just got to make sure you, that you pull your um, keel post out of the way. And basically, the head's just a bullet, bullet shape. So the bottom is just going to be a nice, just tapered. Bullet shape. You don't have to get it perfect this stage. Let's just go get a general shape again with the top and just work your way to the collar Like so. You can see it's not packed super tight. 
<clears throat> it seems to work a little better like that. Okay, so when you get a general shape that you're happy with, let's just get rid of those. A few more of those hairs on the bottom. just keep on working until you, you're happy with the shape. Now as you can see it's fairly obvious that there's going to be more drag on one side of the fly than the other so the, the water is going to push this fly to one side obviously it's going to seek the path of least resistance and we're going to control that with the keel. So let's firstly let's just trim the long side um, before we get get into the, the keel and how, how it works. So what I like to do is use your hook to gauge how wide the body's gonna be. The widest part of the body is about the hook gap. So let's just go ahead and we'll do one, I'll just take it out of the vise so you can see. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one cut about the hook width going to be a little hard for me to show you but it's it's going to be one cut about the hook went and about parallel a little bit tapered in but pretty much parallel you can just taper in a little bit and that's the first cut then I like to do is just take the take your scissors and round that the front part of that off so it gives you a little bit of a transition then you see you've got this flat part here. So if we just taper that by cutting the corners off both sides and just rounding that up. It's the, it's the best part of the deer, deer hair, isn't it? Trimming it is so much fun until you cut too much off. So just play around with that. And let's see what we've got here. So now you can see I've taken the edge the corners off that and it's just nice nice and rounded and it's just a curved bullet shape and that's what you're shooting for let's go ahead and put that back in the vise so it's so it's fairly obvious you got one one side with a lot more drag than the other side. And that's how the sidekick gets his movement. He's going to seek the path of least resistance, which is going to push him to one side. So on my original sidekick, I used UV epoxy. So instead of using the UV epoxy, I'm now using brass beads. And on this one, we're using a 532. So all we do is we just thread our 532 brass bead on our fluorocarbon keel post and we're going to grab a nice sturdy pair of scissors and we're going to cut it about a quarter inch past the bead just like that. Now we just take a lighter and we um, burn the end so it balls up just have to turn it on its side. It's hard to actually show you guys. I might be able to do it this way. Just keep on working it until it melts nearly all the way down. Just like so. There's a couple of reasons why I'm using a brass bead now rather than the UV cement. 
um, with the UV cement it was it was sort of hard to get each fly exactly the same so with the bead it's it's simple you put exactly the same weight on in the exact same spot so it's very uniformed in each fly and you get the same reaction so I think that's that's the key and plus it's a lot less messier for a start the other good thing is when a fish grabs this it just compresses it down and um, it doesn't interfere with the hook gap so our next step we're going to get some super glue and we're going to soak it in right above the hook shank right here we just kind of put one little line of super glue along there so it soaks in and it binds the deer hair to the hook shank so it makes this fly super sturdy super robust we won't get that deer hair spinning on the shank just be careful you don't want it spreading so we're just going to put it one two good good clump there so so it soaks right in we can actually even get our bodkin quickly and just push it in so it soaks right in just don't continue it too long otherwise you'll end up with little holes there if it starts to dry and you keep on poking it so that'll soak in and, and really bind the deer head to the hook shank so next step is to put an eye on and I only put one eye I just put an eye on the flat side so it doesn't interfere with the water flow I'm using a 3D size is 5 16th so we just put a nice dollop of goop on and then we just place our eye on top and then just push it down well that's the sidekick finished just a few things that might help you fish this fish the sidekick the first one is um, always use a loop knot I use a loop knot with pretty much every fly I use but uh, on the sidekick it's particularly important so you just don't choke that action um, the other thing you can use is some uh, silicon type floating on the top of the sidekick just to give it a little bit more buoyancy more pop that's pretty much it I hope you enjoyed that this is the size one oughtn't you can um, pretty much tie this on any size you want the principle will be the same uh, as you increase your size you might have to go up a size bead just to compensate for more drag other than that it's pretty much the same I tie these on really large musky flies articulated musky flies that's where the idea come from initially so really it's just your imagination holding you back I hope you enjoy that till next time take care